Okay, welcome back. Uh, it's going to be the first video in a series about the uh, new free wing Zeus. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me if I'm going to convert it, and yes, I am. I'm going to show you the progress of it so far. I'll talk about a little bit of the Zeus here. Um, I've been, I got quite a few flights on it as an EDF, and I mean, the thing, it flies phenomenal. Um, one major gripe I had was the nose gear. They they had a nose, the nose gear was not long enough. I made a fix for it, and I'll show you how I did that in the uh, end of the video. Um, you know, the, the wing was sitting at a negative incidence on the ground, and, you know, I fly off of a hard surface to get it up to speed. It was like the nose was being pushed into the ground, forcing the nose strut to collapse even more, and you had to horse it off the ground, and uh, that ain't the way I go. Um, I like them to just fly off a very minimal elevator, so I made a fix. It's been working great, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So uh, this is going to be the one we're converting. Um, I got, I fabricated a tank. Let me get it out and show you. You guys are going to be pleasantly surprised that a lot of you guys just hate it the way I cut these models up. This one you do not have to to get the tank in and out. Piece up here. So this is the tank I came up with. It's 46 ounces. I know it's a lot, but myself and a lot of other guys are probably going to put a 60 in it, an X60. And from past experience of the X60 and the Viper Jet, I had to cut the uh, timer down about almost two minutes uh, on a 40 ounce tank. So uh, this tank, 46 ounces on a 60, I think will still get you seven, eight minutes on a 45. Shoot, it's gonna get you 10 plus. Once again, you don't have to fill it up all the way. It's a very similar design to uh, the L39 tanks that I did. Uh, there's a low spot right here. The clunk is going to sit right here on the bottom, and it has never given me any issues in a uh, in the L39. So uh, I think it's going to work out fine for this. Um, once again, it took very minimal cutting. What I did have to do was, uh, if you guys can't stomach this, you shouldn't be doing it. Um, the only part you got to cut out is this little piece right here. I thought long and hard about cutting out the bottom, but I really didn't want to because I know you guys don't like it. And you'd have to cut through the uh, the back spar here. And um, so I tried to do it without it, and uh, I think I succeeded. Um, looking down the model, um, you pretty much just take out the V, and there is, you know, a little bit of beveling you have to do right here. Um, I will be supplying a template of this shape right in through here so, you know, you know how to bevel it. And I will be providing a, uh, a shape um, on this contour up here so um, you can get that. I mean, it's, it's going to work out really good. The tank is exactly on the CG. Um, I got quite a few flights on the EDF, and in my opinion, the best CG is about six to eight millimeters behind the recommended, which puts it right about here. And that's right where the tank sits. The tank sits right like that. And uh, it just nestles in there. And it almost just wedges itself in there. I mean, it fits really nice. There's still a lot of, gonna be a lot of room on top to feed wires. And there's uh, enough room on the bottom to feed the uh, ribbon cables or whatever wires you want through the opening up underneath the tank. Um, so my confidence level is very high that it, it's going to work out very well. And uh, that's why I'm doing these videos now. It's, you know, you've had a lot of interest in it. And, um, you know, if, if you want to get on the list, I suggest you uh, let me know because um, it's getting long already. And, I, you know, I'm not going to sell anything until I fly it and make sure it's right. But the bottom, it'll be, you know, the similar where it gets just a, um, it'll be a laser cut piece to close it up. And uh, 
to uh, actually fit the tank in, you're gonna just make a, uh, a wedge right here, and that's gonna bond everything in, something like that. And uh, the tank isn't gonna go anywhere. And the engine mounts are gonna be, basically from this point to that point, I'm gonna use the same technique that I've done before. I uh, burn it in for a piece of wood. And uh, if you look at the engine size, you know, a 60 is not much bigger than a, a 45. It's two tenths of an inch bigger and it's about two tenths in diameter. It's uh, two tenths of an inch longer. Um, and uh, I mean, it's gonna fit fine in here without any foam removal. So the engine's gonna sit right about here or I'll do the 45. It's, it's still a toss up what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm kind of leaning toward the 60. So, and then, you know, it's going to be the standard tailpipe where the tailpipe will be able to slide in, the aft fuselage will go on, and then be a tailpipe ring in the ass, or uh, aft end. Um, but so far, um, confidence is very high that it's going to work out. And then this piece here, you know, um, I'm going to recommend that you just, just bond it back in place because without taking this out, you cannot feed the tank in and out. And uh, once the tank is seated, I mean, there, there's really no reason to have this off again. That way you can still use the uh, existing hatch hole down. Um, so, you know, I think it's gonna work out great. Model flies really good. And uh, this, this model really kind of caught me by surprise. I wasn't expecting anything else. And, uh, you know, they, uh, they announce it when they're in stock, so. Uh, you know, the uh, the gear doors, I mean, you know, they're, um, for you guys that haven't, you know, really paid any attention to the model, it's a typical T33 uh, gear door arrangement here. Um, I mean, it's flawless, it works, works perfect, foolproof. And then the uh, retracts, or the upgraded, uh, like the T33 retracts, so you won't really have to do anything with them to uh, install the uh, wheels and brakes. So let's uh, take a look at the uh, other model and I'll show you what I did with the nose gear. I mean, this is one thing that they, um, they really blew. I mean, I added five eighths of an inch to the nose gear um, pipe here. I mean, it, it, it brought the nose up to where it should be. It pretty much flies off now with very minimal elevator. And I was even doing it with the an FCG and uh, you store the horse off the ground and I didn't like it. So um, it was a little complicated what I did. So uh, let me bring it over here and I'll show it to you. Um, if you look down in through here, um, I had to add a, um, just a little plywood reinforcement. And these two pieces of G10 here, they're eighth inch. They are actually bonded to the top of the retract mount. And I did that to just give them a little bit more support back here. So flipping it over. So these are the, uh, the G10 pieces that what we saw right here in the back. And the reason I had to do all this is because the way it was set up stock is uh, this strut here was about nine sixteenths further forward in the stock location and the tire came up right against the uh, nose gear door linkage. So, you know, you had a couple options where I tried putting smaller tires on the mains. That helped a little bit, but then you were going to have to jack around with extending the uh, um, little latch here to trigger the door. I didn't want to go that route because I wanted to put the uh, 65 millimeter wheels and brakes on it for the turbine. I didn't want to extend the nose gear doors and move the servo. That was going to be a big old hassle. So I elected to move the nose gear aft about five eighths of an inch. And then as you can see, I added a spacer here. It goes from there down to the steering arm. That's five, eight, five eighths of an inch. And I made up a new um, steering pin that's about five, eight, five eighths of an inch longer that still captures this uh, set screw here. So when the retract retracts, the wheel still comes up and darn near touches this linkage, but it is extended five eighths of an inch. 
But to do that, I had to move the retract aft, which took some doing. So the uh, the G10 pieces are screwed down here with the uh, some countersunk screws that go into the uh, existing bosses and the gear mount. So I had to go in here and I had to remove the uh, portion of the uh, retract mount that allowed me to slide it aft, okay? Then I drilled and tapped four uh, 440 screw holes in the G10 to allow me to uh, bolt the retract down. So I got screw here and here, and then two here that I had to bore down in and um, capture the retract unit. But uh, it's working great. Um, and then you also got to clear out a little bit over here for the um, steering arm. It's working out great. Um, it seems solid. I'm going to do it on the turbine version just because, first of all, it looks stupid with the uh, nose pointed down. And it flies off the runway much better. Um, so, you know, that's about it. I mean, the model flies fantastic. It's, it's got a really neat airfoil to it. I mean, very precise in the air. Um, I don't see any, it's going to be perfect as a turbine because this model likes to land with a little bit of a power, you know, and the uh, static thrust of the uh, turbine is going to make it ideal. Um, one thing I did notice, um, the model kind of reaches a terminal velocity and a dive to where it just doesn't seem like it's going to go any faster as a ducted fan. I don't know if it's the big inlets doing that or it's the fan or what. Um, it might be better with a turbine, I don't know. Um, but personally, I don't think the model's gonna be any faster with a 45 than it is with the 90 on an eight cell. Um, I could be wrong, I don't know. Um, you know, it moves along pretty good. You know, the advantage with a turbine is, you know, you can run it at a higher power setting all the time for, you know, seven minutes. If you run this thing wide open uh, with an eight cell, uh, for the whole flight, you're going to be flying for two minutes max. Um, other than that, I mean, they, except for the nose gear, they, they blew that. The uh, the rest of the model is flawless. I mean, I'm, I'm really happy with it. It slows down nice. No uh, tendency to uh, tip stall or anything. Very clean on the bottom with all the uh, the gear doors shut. And they, they close nicely, especially with the... Uh, Servo arrangement up front. I mean, it really holds the uh, doors tight. Um, but I, I'm really happy with the thing, and I got quite a few flights on it now. So um, if you're uh, interested in the conversion kit, that's going to be, I don't think I'll have parts available to sell until after the first of the year because I'm not going to sell anything until I fly it and make sure it's right. Um, but, you know, shoot me an email if you want to get on the list. No money up front. Um, other than that, um, you know, like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And then uh, I'm going to do some more videos of uh, me doing the engine mounts and tailpipe installation. And then I will do another video on just mounting the tank once I get another fuselage. Okay, thanks for watching.